They're taking a real page from companies like Red um, that are building just modular little bodies uh, that give you a lot of versatility so that you can then build out your body to have it in more like a studio mode like it is here or strip it down so you can throw it on a drone or a gimbal really easily. All carbon fiber body, uh, very lightweight. So the Alexa Mini shares the exact same sensor as every other camera in the Airy family. Um, starting with the original Alexa Classic, they all have the ALEV or ALEV 3 sensor uh, going all the way back to the Alexa Classic. So the Alexa Classic, the Alexa XT, the Airy Amira, even the new, uh, brand new Alexa SXT, which isn't even really out yet, they all have one sensor type. So you're still getting all of the benefits of that awesome sensor that everybody rants and raves about, um, all of its incredible dynamic range, all of its excellent skin tones. Uh, you get all of that all but just in a much, much smaller package. So here at Brainbox right now, we have a couple different ways we build up our Alexa Minis. This Mini is built kind of with airy accessories. We have a battery plate on the side, uh, giving you free access to the compact flash slot on the back. Keeping the battery plate on the side lets you to mount slimline batteries. If you're trying to put this camera on a Movi or a Ronin or something like that, let's, you can get it, get it on there um, without having to do too much weight rebalancing. Uh, we typically, however, will build this camera out with a with a non airy accessories. We we have, a, I believe, Tilta makes a really nice camera cage that typically would hang the battery off off the back of the camera and gives you and will help you can slide it back and forth to access the compact flash slot. Lots of other companies make accessories for this as well. There's Wooden Camera, um, there's Tilta, um, and I'm sure numerous others. It's kind of just a matter of figuring out which ones suit your shooting shooting style. Uh, the Tilta cages are really nice and a slightly more affordable option. Airy of course makes a great product um, that, as well, but it's definitely a, a higher budgeted option. Uh, the Alexa Mini camera though is not a cheap camera. I should make that make mention of that it's definitely a highest one of the highest end cinema cameras you can get. It's not a mid-level camera like a C300. Um, so if you're looking to price one out, uh, be prepared for a little bit of sticker shock. So another cool thing about the Alexa Mini um, is that unlike uh, Alexa XTs that are using either like S by S cards or codex recorders, things like, things like that, the Alexa Mini is taking a page from the Area Mira camera and uses uh, the new CFast 2.0 cards, giving it a write speed of up to around 500 megabytes a second. Um, but unlike the Amira, and probably to save space on the camera body, there's only one card slot. The Amira has two card slots, giving you the ability to record um, longer record times, potentially. This one only has one. It also has uh, integrated uh, radios, so you can control the camera um, through Wi-Fi, through things like the Airy WCU4, all internally, not without having a need for an external uh, motor controller or motor driver. Three. Uh, C-Force motors, daisy chained together, wired straight into the lens mount of the camera. Uh, that's giving power and all motor controlling information straight out of front th from the antenna of the mini body. There's no external motor driver that has to be Velcroed onto the body somewhere. Um, no additional power cables have to be run. It's a very clean cabling system, uh, very simple and very straightforward. So on the, on the other side of the camera, on the operator side, you have, uh, this is how you control the camera. Because it's so small and so lightweight, there's no, uh, there's, you don't have your typical uh, side LCD panel with your user interface buttons to control it that way. You basically have to control the camera through uh, the viewfinder. The viewfinder uh, acts as both viewfinder and LCD screen. This LCD screen will pop up here and you can then look at it that way or you can even rotate it and fold it in. And this menu here actually gives you all control of all of the camera settings. And because this is an Airy camera, um, just because it's an Airy and it's top of the line and it's kind of considered the industry standard high-end cinema camera, does not mean it's a complicated uh, machine. It's uh, Airy's done a really good job of engineering the user interface, and in true Airy fashion, they make it very, very simple to use. And you can also, of course, use the screen as a monitor itself, just by tapping the monitor button, or you can use it as the uh, menu navigation. So it's very simple to figure this out. Um, EI stands for, stands for exposure index is where you set the sensitivity of the camera. Uh, by default, it's 800, which is about the which is about the baseline standard for the sensor. Uh, you can easily dial it up um, to 3200 uh, or down uh, to 160. 
look basically gives you gives you control over the the look applied to the in, both the internal recording that your record your media is recorded onto as well as your SDI output um, for your either your monitor path or if you're sending a signal to an external recorder look tells you what type of signals being sent where uh, so right now you can see the camera set to recording internally on, in Aerie Log C. Aerie's Log C is just really quickly on a tangent is a uh, low contrast, high dynamic range, trying to give you the maximum uh, color and color information into one image. Definitely designed for a colorist to kind of touch up after your shoot. Um, but the SDI path has a look applied. And that if I go back to this menu, I can see that my look is set at uh, Airy 709, which is Airy's Rec 709 kind of color space. You can also go into this menu and kind of create your own look. It's a little bit cumbersome to do so on the uh, on the MVF, but you can also use something like an Airy Look Tool, which is a free software utility you can download and go mess around with on an, on an iPad, on a laptop, and kind of create a custom LUT, load it into the camera, and then apply it to your footage. And it's all and it's all also done as metadata. So that so that look that that LUT that you'd be creating um, is a metadata parameter that can then be changed um, once the footage is in your uh, NLE or your editing system. White balance is pretty self-explanatory. You have full control over white balance as you would expect, uh, as well as shutter, uh, time code, and FPS or frames per second. Uh, so let's talk about recording formats. Uh, the Alexa Mini can record 4K. Most people are going to be using it to shoot 4K. Uh, but it's not a true 4K. It's the, the native resolution of the sensor is 3.2K. So there's a lot of um, internal up that's done by some very sophisticated algorithms and um, some dedicated hardware inside the camera to up that image in a very nice and pleasing way from 3.2K to 3.8K. Um, 3.8K is also known as uh, Ultra HD or UHD, which is the, uh, the broadcast television standard uh, for 4K content. Now, at least not yet, the Alexa Mini is not doing um, the digital cinema, digital cinema intermediates or the DCI 4K, which is like, which is 4096 by 26 something pixel resolution. So it's actually a little bit more resolution. Uh, cameras, upcoming cameras like the new Airy uh, Alexa SXT, which is a much larger, more expensive studio style camera, will do a 4K DCI. Um, that's an important distinction to make. But something to keep in mind is that they're, since they're both doing it from the same 3.2K sensor and it's essentially all fancy up there probably won't be a lot of noticeable difference uh, in actual resolved detail between an Alexa Mini and an Alexa SXT. Uh, Aria is claiming that there's some new fancy electronics um, inside the SXT that are giving it a better signal path that no other Alexa camera has currently. But until those cameras are more readily available on the market, uh, that kind of remains to be seen. With that said, um, Airy, uh, Airy Log C ProRes uh, 3.8K on this camera looks phenomenal. Uh, it gives you great color detail, uh, gives you great clarity and sharpness, um, despite being uh, an up-resed image. Um, so aside from resolution, this camera will record uh, into the ProRes format. Everybody loves ProRes. ProRes is a great uh, recording format. Uh, and currently the highest resolution you can do is ProRes 4444, that's four fours. Um, and it's, you can even record the new 4444XQ uh, res format. XQ is uh, the new ProRes Rec 2020 color space capable, 500 megabits per second theoretical uh, uh, bit rate. Uh, you can do it on the Alexa Mini. It will burn up your CFast cards really, really quickly just like a couple of minutes per card, um, if that. So unless you really have a need for that, just the straight ProRes triple four or quadruple four actually is more than enough for most purposes. Uh, <clears throat> another really cool thing about the, about the Mini uh, is its ability to shoot four three modes. So people that like anamorphic lenses can throw in your favorite anamorphic glass on this camera and shoot four three internally to the camera. And an area has only recently, in software update package 4.0, enabled open gate recording uh, in the 4.3 mode, giving you more resolution, allowing you to record every tiny, every single pixel in the sensor, pixels that are normally reserved for just for the look around area of the operator. You can now record open gate and grab every last pixel detail, especially when shooting 4.3, which is important on anamorphic, giving you more potential resolution or if you're shooting non-anamorphic and you still want to shoot open gate it gives you the ability to sort of reposition your frame subtly um, in a post-production world.
Back on the operator side of the camera, the Alexa Mini, just like it's a mirror, has built-in uh, internal ND filters, meaning you can sometimes save yourself the hassle of hanging a map box off the front of your lens or dealing with filters. Go in and dial in ND all the way up to uh, ND 2.1. You can hear the motors there whirring as it slides in the 2.1 ND filter. And that's all done internally. Uh, so I also want to mention the, the Aerie WCU4. This is Aerie's newest uh, handset controller. Um, it's, their, it's a three-channel controller uh, that can control focus, iris, and zoom on, or just one channel if you, or if you only need one channel on, on a lens. It's, it's kind of made to interface with an Alexa Mini because you have that motor or motor driver free uh, setup that I kind of described earlier. You also get a lot of really cool features like the WC4 um, with the Alexa remote license key can actually control every uh, setting in the camera from changing ISO, controlling run, uh, start and stop, uh, to putting in ND filters, changing your recording format. All can be done, your shutter angle can all can be done uh, from the menu here on the WC4. It also contains lens data files so that in this instance, like with the Zeiss Compact Zoom on here, I could quickly go into the menus, find Zeiss Compact Zoom 70-200, select it, uh, and load that, that lens profile, and then all of the marks on the hand wheel would then, would then match exactly with the marks on the barrel. That makes lens changes on your AC uh, really painless and really easy. So when Airy first came out with this camera, they were really advertising that this is the first Alexa, or the first Airy Alexa that you can easily put on like a Movi or a Ronin or other types of gimbals. Um, because it was so small. Uh, but because it's such a powerful camera, it can do so much of what a full-size Alexa can do. People are using it for a lot more than just steady camera gimbal operations. You can build it out into a full studio mode, kind of like we have it here, and use it as a studio camera. And then without too much retooling, configure it uh, into a uh, into more of a gimbal mode or, not, or even a drone mode. So most people with the Alexa Mini are gonna be shooting um, Apple ProRes, which is a great way to go, but there's also the ability with the new software update package to shoot uh, in Aerie's RAW format, because it's called Aerie RAW. Aerie RAW is uh, certainly a higher data rate um, MXF wrapped uh, image that gives you full metadata of all of your lens settings or any, in any other settings you want to have user input through the MVF. And um, there's just some, certainly some debate in the world about the extra uh, dynamic range or clarity that you can get from an Airy Rob image compared to an Apple ProRes 4444. Um, I think the, the verdict is still kind of out in some ways. Uh, certainly if you're shooting uh, a project that's destined for a big screen, like a theater or a big blockbuster, Airy Raw is definitely the way to go. Uh, but for most applications, uh, Apple ProRes is pretty good. I think Apple ProRes 4444 is probably 95, maybe 98% of everything that you would get from an Airy Raw signal. Um, but like I said, that's that's an area of some debate. Not, there's not a ton of agreement, but for most people looking on a nice 4K monitor at an Airy Raw color corrected image compared to an Apple ProRes Log C color corrected image, uh, it's really hard to tell the difference. So the Alexa Mini is also a high speed camera. Of course, you can over crank this uh, to get that nice slow motion look that so many people like to shoot with. Um, at the full 4K, 3.8K or 3.2K, uh, the camera currently tops out um, at 60 frames per second. Uh, if you dial that resolution back a little bit, if you go all the way down to just a 1920 by 1080 HD sync signal, you can shoot up to 200 frames per second, which gives you a lot of range. So 200 frames per second is awfully slow. And there's also, uh, currently, I don't believe high-speed frame rates are supported with the Airy RAW modes, uh, but I believe future updates will allow you to record up to 60 frames per second at 4K. Uh, to an external recorder in the Airy RAW format if that's important to you as well. So that's about it for our uh, Airy Alexa Mini overview video. Uh, it's an amazing camera. Client feedback here at BrainBox has been excellent and we've really liked shooting with it on a couple of our own BrainBox productions. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll have some video clips in, interspersed in this video and maybe here at the end as well uh, so you can take a look at how this footage looks in a real world situation. Shameless self-plug, if you ever want to rent an, an Alexa Mini at great prices, uh, Brainbox is a great place to do so if you're in the Los Angeles area. We can also ship cameras to your location. Uh, check out our website in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. We will try to get back to you. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.